Hey guys! Um, I wanted to come on today and talk to you guys a little bit about cruising. So I know for a while now cruising has been either non-existent or it's been a slow start. It's been a little bit confusing what the um, restrictions are, but we are now back into full-blown cruise season. So I did want to chat to you guys about some of your options um, when it comes to cruising, when it comes to using if you have those future cruise credits that you um, that you need to um, book before the end of the year, and some really confusing promotions and um, changes to the cruise industry. So I have been working with several clients recently to book cruise vacations, um, especially now that we've seen the vaccine roll out from, for the five to 11 year, year olds, a lot of families are coming back to cruising. Um, and I have a lot of families who are doing Europe in the summer. So this just happened with a new client. I do kind of want to walk you guys through it um, just so that you know what's out there. Um, that you can be a good consumer, but um, I do just think it's important for you guys to kind of know what the cruising landscape looks like um, as well. So I have some new clients um, who reached out to me. They're doing um, a Mediterranean cruise on Celebrity Cruise Line, a really beautiful itinerary. It's round trip Rome. Um, it will also visit Greece and Croatia and Montenegro. So it's a really nice itinerary. So before COVID, uh, Celebrity shifted to a different model. So they shifted to this model they call um, Always Included, which is a, an encompassing all-inclusive package. So the Always Included um, is going to include your um, a shore credit, so for shore excursions. It's going to include, um, well, that's not true. This is where it gets a little bit confusing. So the always included, it includes your beverage package, your gratuity, and your Wi-Fi. So those three things are included in the always included. When you upgrade to the Elevate package, you get go from a classic drink package to a premium drink package, and then you get a shore excursion credit per cabin. So everything on the consumer facing website. So what you guys see, if you were to log into celebrity is promoting always included, always included, always included, always included. And if you call, you will also get message like the on hold is like, you know, with celebrity, we are always include, everything is always included now. But, <laughs> and I, I don't think they do this to be nefarious or to bait and switch. But when you do go in to book your um, your individual staterooms, the pricing is starting from this dollar amount, starting from $1,000. That pricing is for an option to do a cruise only package. So it does say that, so it's an image, it's very beautifully done the website. Um, it's set up to really guide you through the booking process with images. Um, so when you click on that, like, you know, um, ocean view bulk or ocean view stateroom starting at $1,000, you click on that and then it's going to give you a couple more options between that. Um, but the cheapest option that thousand dollars that you saw, um, when you say that's the one I want in the fine print on the image, it does say this is a cruise only package. So what that means is it's not the all-inclusive that you're seeing advertised. It really is just the cruise rate. So you're not getting any of that always inclusive. So it can seem a little bit confusing because it would appear from the advertising on the homepage and the messaging that it wouldn't even be an option to not have all of the things because the package is called always included. So buyer beware. It, it does tell you, but it could be a little bit confusing, especially if you don't know what to look for. So this came up because the clients who I was working, who I was working with were brand new to using a travel agent and they were really just confused. And when they, when 
they came to me, they obviously wanted help to sort through it. And I wasn't even seeing, I don't see the same website that you guys see when you go to their customer website. When I book packages, it's all just data. So I just get a list of cabins and a list of rates. I don't see those beautiful photos. I don't get taken through the site in the same way that you do. And so I was like, I'm not, I'm not seeing that rate anywhere. I'm very confused where it's coming from. And so for the first time in probably years, I went onto the customer website and tried to book as a customer. And I can see why they were very confused, but it gave me the opportunity to really explain to them what the differences were and why. Um, because, you know, I, I don't, I don't want to say I don't care, but it doesn't matter to me at the end of the day which cabin category you choose. What matters to me is that you have the best vacation and that the vacation is what you're expecting. So if you're expecting <laughs> to have all of the things included and you've booked a rate that doesn't include that, you're going to be really upset when you show up to that ship and it's not what you're expecting. You, and that is not what I want for anyone. So, you know, and that was a really great opportunity for me to, you know, kind of show the value of a travel professional in understanding the process and why. And I don't want to say it was misleading because they did tell you on the website, but I could see where it was very easy to miss. So where things might get confusing and we want, I want everybody to get the biggest bang for their vacation dollars. So long story short, we walked through the whole process and they were happy and we were able to resolve all of their concerns and worries and move on from there. So I do think it's really important that as we launch back into cruising, um, you know, look at the options out there. Um, obviously, if you have a future cruise credit, we can absolutely help you to use that before they expire. But when it comes to different cruise line options, you know, really taking a look at what the promotions give you um, versus what's the best value for your family. Um, another brand new client um, was debating between, and they actually haven't decided. We're still kind of um, looking at the differences, um, debating between Norwegian Cruise Line and Royal Caribbean. So Norwegian right now is promoting an all four. Again, it's one of those packages where everything's included. And the way it's promoted, it does make you think that those are all free things, that you're going to get the Wi-Fi, you're going to get the gratuities, you're going to get the short credit, you're going to get um, actually not, it's not gratuities. It's Wi-Fi, short credit, specialty dining and beverage package, and that you're getting them all for free. You're not getting them all for free. You're getting them as a bundled package. So there is a value to it. It's certainly less expensive than if you were to buy your cruise fare and then add all of those things on individually, but you're not getting those for free. So the four all in, is not it's not free <laughs> those things are not being given away for free they're being added into a promotional package um, so we looked at the Norwegian cruise line I think we're looking at the escape great itinerary um, classic cruise ship it does have some great um, activities for kids in terms of like the water slides and things like that um, and this is a family with kids in a very wide age range. But then we looked at Symphony of the Sea, which is one of those beautiful new mega ships from Royal Caribbean. And when it comes to a large family with kids of all ages, there's literally something for everybody on that ship. So the cruise fare was coming in for that ship less expensive than the Norwegian ship. But what we did is we researched the cost of the beverage package and the Wi-Fi package. And when we added those back in, which we knew this family was going to want, almost identical cruise fares. So when it comes down to it, promotionally, one of them may look better, right? Because it looked like we were getting a lot free for Norwegian. So the family may have chosen that, but that might not be the right ship for them. When it came to cruise fare, the initial out-of-the-door price on Royal Caribbean was less expensive, but 
once we added back in the things that we knew that they were going to need on board, it was almost like apples to apples in terms of pricing. So, I mean, I'm less than a hundred dollar difference per cabin. So I think it's really important at the end of the day to not necessarily look at a promotion and book on a promotion. We all want to get the most for our cruise dollars. Like you don't want to spend more than you have to, right? But you want to look at the value for your family. So at the end of the day, it opens up the opportunity for them to sail on a different ship that they thought they may not have been able to go on with their budget. Um, and they really thought their budget was only going to be able to fit into Norwegian because of the promotion. Both are great cruise lines. It really just kind of depends on what you're looking for out of your cruise vacation. Um, and then the other thing to consider is depending on your vacation style, there are many other cruise lines, and I know that I've mentioned them before, um, that fill different niches that you may not know about um, because they're not mass market cruise lines. Now, that's not to say a mass market cruise line is bad. What that means, though, is some of our cruise lines, Celebrity, Royal, Holland, America, Princess, they're going to be um, advertising on mass, right? They advertise in a much larger way to the general consumer. And some of our smaller cruise lines, Uncruise, is really popular with millennials and Gen Xers because it's a different experience, very small ships, a lot of time spent off ship doing much more like exploration. Um, they have really cool itineraries and you spend a lot of time snorkeling, scuba diving, kayaking, being a little bit more adventurous in your ports. Um, uh, Hurt de Gerten, I don't know if I, I never know if I say that right. Um, probably more of our Gen Xer to baby boomer. Um, it does tend to skew a little bit older, but they do have an awesome kids program and they're expedition cruises. So they're really about the science of those destinations, the Arctic Circle, Antarctica, um, Norway, um, Galapagos. You're really gonna be doing a kind of in-depth about, you're basically becoming a naturalist on those ships. And so they have natural sun board. It's a really cool experience. Um, and their kids club is amazing. So I don't get a lot of families on those for some reason. Um, they do tend to skew a little bit older when I'm getting clients, but their kids clubs are really, really cool. So maybe this is a trip that's multi-generational, grandma, grandpa, mom, dad, grandkids, because it's a really interesting experience. Um, and then we have some of our smaller luxury cruise lines that may seem like they're outpriced, um, but it depends on what you want to do. So uh, Oceana, Regent, Windstar are all very small cruise lines. You're going to be typically under a thousand people, high staff, staff ratio, large suites. They're going to be able to go into ports that bigger ships cannot go into. Um, and they have a lot of exclusive experience. So it is more of a luxury product. Um, but when you compare it to say something like a celebrity, if you're in a balcony or suite class on celebrity and you want to do all of the shore excursions, switching to one of these smaller cruise lines, that's going to have a larger stateroom that's more, um, spacious, that's, um, like nicely appointed with excursions, meals, wine, all of those things included already. Um, and then oftentimes they have free air promos or promos like air to Europe for $300 from the US, which is crazy. The price difference isn't so significant then. Once you, again, it's about all of the things that you're going to do on your vacation and not just that base cruise place. So I think that that's really important. And this week, <laughs> well, the last two weeks, cruising has come back big time. The requests for cruising for the spring and fall um, have gone to practically zero. <laughs> so other than some Antarctica expeditions that some folks were looking at last year for 2022, nothing has come through in cruising. It hasn't really been on anybody's radar, or at least my clients, but now it's come back significantly. So I think we're seeing a lot of um, confidence when it comes to cruising. Um, and then river cruising too. Don't discount the opportunity to, to do a river cruise, especially if you're looking at an option to go to multiple places in Europe. The Danube, 
um, Amsterdam to Budapest, you're going to go through so many of those countries that are you're going to want to hit those main ports because all of those main cities are going to be on the water, the Rhine, the Seine, um, the Douro in Portugal. So river cruising is a really beautiful way to um, see a lot of Europe. Um, even Africa and Asia. Now we have our river cruises there. We have our U.S. river cruises on the Mississippi, um, on the, oh my gosh, the, what is the name of the river in Oregon? I can't remember, but we have those as well. We do have some South America river cruises. So it's a really nice way to travel a large area without having to move hotel rooms and get on a motor coach. Um, so that's really, really appealing. And it's not necessarily for old people. I know I've talked about river cruises before and we think of Viking as kind of a certain demographic, but Uniworld has a um, offshoot called U that is designed for that millennial client. So that 30 something who is, you know, a full professional in their careers, um, disposable income, you know, ready to see a lot of things, but, you know, want other amenities on board besides, you know, what you can get in some of your traditional cruise lines. So it's really geared towards that audience. Um, we have AMA Waterways and AMA Waterways is the um, cruise provider that works with Adventures by Disney. So family friendly cruising. You have triples and quads, which you're not going to see on many of your river cruise lines. And they're family friendly, which is great, especially for those multi-generational trips. Um, that's why I love an adventure by Disney. They're using that high-end service of Ama Waterway um, and they're overlaying their adventure guides and their exclusive experiences onto that. So cruising is back. Um, if you guys have questions about cruising, certainly drop them in the comments. Um, so our season is really going to hit in January. That's our wave season. That's where the biggest bookings come in. But I'm guaranteeing you we're going to see a Black Friday promotion from almost every single cruise vendor. So if you've got cruising on your radar for 2022 and even into 2023 now, let's talk about that. Um, one other note, flights. If you're planning to fly anywhere before the end of even into 2022 let's start booking that now because flight pricing as i predicted is starting to increase significantly so you're going to want to lock that in okay that is it i just wanted to um hop on here to talk about cruising because i want you guys to be um educated consumers when it comes to cruise travel if you have any questions drop them in the comments below and i will see you guys real soon